Although all this of the second instant could have happened in a very brief time on account of the subtle nature of the angels and the power of God, nevertheless I understood that the kind consideration of the Most High permitted a certain delay. With the interposition of some intervals of time, he proposed to them the good and the bad, truth and falsehood, justice and injustice, divine grace and friendship, as opposed to sin and enmity of God. They were enabled to see eternal reward and eternal punishment, the perdition of Lucifer and of those who would follow him. His majesty showed them hell and its pains. They saw it all, for, by virtue of their superior and excellent nature, they understood the essence of other more qualified and limited creatures, so that, before falling from grace, they were clearly aware of the place of their chastisement. Although they did not know in the same manner the reward of glory, they had of it other knowledge, and besides, they had the manifest and express promise of the Lord. The Most High had therefore justified his cause and proceeded with the greatest equity and justice. But as all this goodness and equity did not suffice to restrain Lucifer and his followers, they were chastised in their stubbornness and hurled into the depths of the hellish caverns, while the good angels were confirmed in eternal grace and glory. All this was consummated in the third instant, and thus, it became truly manifest that no being outside of God himself is impeccable by nature, since the angel, who held such an exalted position and was adorned with so many great gifts of knowledge and grace, nevertheless sinned and was lost. What will become of human frailty if the divine power does not defend it and if it forces God to forsake it? It remains to investigate the motive which urged Lucifer and his confederates to sin and what was the occasion of their disobedience and fall, for this is the point to which I wanted to come. In regard to this, it was made known to me that they could commit many sins as far as the guilt of sin is concerned, although they did not consummate them in acts. However, on account of those which they did actually commit freely and of their own depraved will, they acquired the disposition to all bad acts, inducing others to commit and approving in others those sins, which they could not commit themselves. Following the bad inclinations which from that time on filled Lucifer, he fell into a most disorderly self-love, which arose from the consciousness of being endowed with greater gifts and greater beauty of nature and grace than the other inferior angels. He tarried with inordinate pleasure in this consciousness, and thus self-satisfied he became lax and remiss in the gratitude which was due to God as the sole cause of all that he had received. Turning again and again in admiration toward himself, he took pleasure in his own beauty and grace, attributing them to himself and loving them as his own. This disorderly self-love not only caused him to exalt himself on account of the superior virtues which he had received, but also induced him to harbor envy and covetousness for other gifts and for excellences not his own. Then, because he could not attain them, he conceived a mortal hatred and indignation against God, who created him out of nothing, and against all his creatures. Hence arose his disobedience, presumption, injustice, infidelity, blasphemy, and perhaps also a certain kind of idolatry, for he coveted for himself the adoration and reverence due to God. He blasphemed the divine magnificence and holiness. He failed in the trust and loyalty due to him. He plotted to destroy all the creatures and presumed to be able to do all this and much more by his own power. Thus his pride ascends continually and perseveres, though his arrogance is greater than his strength, for in this he cannot increase, and in sin one abyss calls the other. 
the first angel who sinned was Lucifer, as is described in the 14th chapter of Isaiah. He induced others to follow him, and therefore he is called the prince of the demons, not on account of his natural gifts, for these would not secure to him that title, but on account of his guilt. Those that sinned were not all of one order or hierarchy, but among all hierarchies there were many who sinned. It is proper that I also explain what was made known to me concerning the kind of honor and excellence which Lucifer aspired to and envied. As in the works of God, there is measure, number, and weight. His providence decided to show to the angels immediately after their creation and before they could incline to diverse ends, the purpose for which he had created them with such an exalted and perfect nature. Of all this, I obtained the following information. At first, they received a more explicit intelligence of the being of God, one in substance, trine in person, and that they were commanded to adore and reverence him as their creator and highest Lord, infinite in his essence and attributes. All subjected themselves to this command and obeyed it, but with a certain difference. The good angels obeyed through love and on account of the justice of it, offering their love and good will, freely admitting and believing what was above their intelligence and obeying with joy. Lucifer, on the other hand, submitted himself because the opposite seemed to him impossible. He did not do it with perfect charity, for he, as it were, was divided in his will between himself and the infallible truth of the Lord. In consequence, it happened that the precept appeared to him in a measure difficult and violent, and his fulfilling of it was wanting in love and in the desire to do justice. Thus he exposed himself beforehand to the danger of not persevering. Although grace did not leave him on account of this remissness and slowness in the accomplishment of these first acts, nevertheless his bad disposition began with them. For there remained with him a certain weakness and laxity of virtue and spirit, and the perfection of his nature did not shine forth as it should. It appears to me that the effect of this remissness in Lucifer is similar to that which is caused in the soul by a deliberate venial sin. I do not say that he sinned mortally or even venially at that time, since he fulfilled the precept of God. But this fulfillment was remiss and imperfect, springing more from a sense of overwhelming compulsion than from a loving willingness to obey. Thus he put himself in danger of falling.